Hello everyone. Welcome to Dr. Rajkumar's Learning App. In this session, we are going to discuss about the Jainism and Buddhism. We discussed in the last session related to the Vedic Kira, and there is a lot of rituals and sacrifices become popular. So, how come this Jainism and Buddhism become origin? The Kshatriyas reaction against the domination of the priestly class called Brahmanas, because Brahmanas started dominating the society in terms of introducing more rituals and sacrifices. So the indiscriminate killing of cattle of for Vedic sacrifices for food had led to the destabilization of the new agricultural economy, which was dependent on the cattle for plowing the field. Emergence of agrarian economy requires more amount of cattle to engage in the agriculture activity. The rituals and sacrifices gives, uh, you know, uh, you know, gives uh, the decimation in the population of animals. So they they wanted to come up with a new ideology. That is one of the major reason. The growth of cities with increase in the circulation of punched mark coins. The Vaishya started dominating the society. Okay, because of the emergence of trade and commerce activity, introduction of punched mark coins, which gives more weightage to the Vaishyas. Since the Varna system. Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. The Vaishyas were the paying community but they are not you know, eligible in terms of going above in the ranking system of Varna. The new form of property created <coughs> social inequalities and the common people wanted to get back to their primitive form of life. So the commoners wanted to follow a separate ideology. So that is the time period emergence of Jainism and Buddhism came into existence. So these are all the points we need to remember under the cause of origin of Jainism and Buddhism in India's history. So first we will discuss about the Buddhism. You know Buddhism founded by Gautama Buddha also known as Siddhartha. He was born in 563 BC. We have different opinion related to the birth uh, timeline of uh, uh, Buddha. Uh, Buddha and uh, Mahavira were the contemporaries in terms of Jainism and Buddhism as well. So, 563 BC, uh, which considered one of the proof related to the birth of Gautama Buddha. Uh, in the Republican clan of Shakya, he, is, he belonged to Shakya clan, so that we used to call him as a Shakya Muni. Okay, from the <coughs> Lumbini uh, near Kapilavas to Nepal is the birthplace. His mother was a princess from the Kosala dynasty. Four sides of Buddha's life at the age of 29 changed his perspective. He went outside and uh, he saw uh, four important uh, you know, events of the other's life. An old man, a deceased person, an ascetic, a dead person. Then he decided uh, to reunicate from his home. Reunication means leaving from the home. That is known as reunication. He understood the complete uh, society's suffering. And he wanted to know the reason behind the suffering. That is the reason behind the reunification of Gautama Buddha. Okay, so the important events of his life uh, carries a different symbol form. We need to know the symbols and the events. Jama, that is birthplace, Lumbini, the birth event of Buddha symbolize the lotus and bull, the symbol. And Maha Bishikarma, which is horse, that is reunification of his life. Okay, reunication means he is coming out from his home, right? Which is known as Baha Maha Binish Kramashana. Okay, so horse is the symbol. And Nirvana. Nirvana means uh, attainment, uh, enlightenment of Buddha. He got, you know, enlightenment uh, uh, under the people tree of Bodhi. Okay, Bodh Gaya. He used to call it as Bodhi tree. The symbol is Bodhi tree. And Dharma Chakra Pravartana. After getting the enlightenment, uh, for his disciples, he did a first preaching which is known as Dharma Chakra Pravartana, okay, which happened in the region named called Sarnath and the symbol is wheel, Dharma Chakra wheel and uh, Mahaparnirvana. Mahaparnirvana means a death event of Lord Buddha. So, Kushinagara is the place where he died and the symbol is stupa. The relics of the body of Buddha were uh, buried in the stupa which is symbol, okay. So, these are all the important events in the life of Buddha and also the replication of those events which in the form of symbols. Doctrines of Buddhism, four noble truths of Buddhism. Dukkha, life is full of sorrow. Samyuda, there are castes related to the sorrows. Okay, life is full of sorrow and uh, there is a reason behind that sorrow. Nirodha, it can be stopped. All those sorrows can be stopped. Nirodha Ghamini Pradipada, path leading towards the cessation of sorrow. 
So life is full of sorrow. There is a reason behind sorrow. We can stop the sorrow and the reach, we can reach the place where we can come out from the sorrow. <clears throat> These are all the four noble truths of Buddha. Ashtaginga Marga. Okay, how we can stop the sorrows means we need to follow the middle path, which is known as Ashtaginga Marga or Madhya Marga. Right observation, right determination, right exercise, right action, right speech, right memory, right meditation and right livelihood. These are the eightfold path, which is known as Ashtaginga Marga, middle path thing. Okay, so Madhya Marga to avoid excess of both luxury and austerity. We don't go the whole like you know extreme luxurious life and don't go extreme asterisk life. Your life is supposed to be in the middle path, which is known as Madhya Marga. How to follow that Madhya Marga? Following the eightfold path. And three ratna of Buddhism. Three ratna of Buddhism. Buddha means enlightened one. Okay. Buddha means enlightened one. Dharma or Dhamma means doctrines. Sangha means assemblies. Sangha means assemblies. Okay, so what are the special features of this Buddhism? Buddhism does not recognize the existence of God and soul. There is no recognition given to the God and soul by the Buddhism. Women were allowed to admit into the Sanghas, assemblies. Women also allowed. But here in the uh, later Vedic period, the women were not allowed to attend the assemblies. But here, they admitted women also to attend the assemblies. Sangha was open to all irrespective of caste and sex. Irrespective of male or female, irrespective of any caste or any varna, anyone can be a part of the Sangha. That is one of the important point, which is equality. They never used the Sanskrit as a medium of communication. They used Pali, the local language, for the purpose of preaching the uh, Buddhism, so that the spread of Buddhism become more popular among the common people of India. Ashoka embraced Buddhism and spread it Central Asia, West Asia and Sri Lanka. Ashoka is one of the uh, greatest king of India, comes under the Mauryan Empire, who contributed to the development as well as the spread of Buddhism, you know, around in and around the India, such Central Asian countries, West Asian countries, as well as the Sri Lanka, because he sent missionaries to the different part of the world to propagate the religious name called Buddhism. Okay, and four important councils happened in the history. So we need to know the year and uh, which region and also who is the patronage king, under whose time period it happened, under the chairman, the Buddhist monk, and what is the significance of that particular council. So, four Buddhist council is important for us to remember. First Buddhist council, year 483 BC. Remember, what is the reason behind the first Buddhist council? Whatever the teachings which made by the Buddha, so far it is the form of words. They never come up with the writings of whatever the teaching did by the Buddha. So after the right after the death of Buddha, this first council was organized under Mahakashyap. He was the Buddhist monk in the place Rajgriha under the patronage king name called Ajasta Shatru. Ajasta Shatru comes under the Magadhan Empire. We will discuss that later. Okay, what is the significance? First time there was a compilation of the Buddha's teaching under Sutta Pitaka and Vinaya Pitaka. Sutta Pitaka was compiled by Ananda. Vinaya Pitaka was compiled by Upali. Sutta Pitaka carries the teaching of Buddha. The teachings of Buddha was penned down. And Vinaya Pitaka means it's a monastery code. Monasteries. In Buddhism, you need to understand three important terminology. One is Chaityas. Another one is Viharas. Then Stupas. Chaityas means Buddhist shrine, temple place for the worship. Viharas means monasteries. The Buddhist monks wanted to propagate the religious. They wanted to travel from one place to another place. Wherever they go, they wanted to stay, right? For that particular purpose, monasteries were built, which is known as Viharas. Stupas means where the relics of Buddhas were buried, which is known as Stupas. Three important terminologies you need to understand. So, whatever the code they need to follow, which they used to stay in the monasteries, right? That was compiled under the Vinaya Pitaka. These are two important things and which was compiled in which language? Pali language. That is your first Buddhist council. Second Buddhist council held the 383 BC after 100 years of the first Buddhist council. Kalashoka was the king and Sabakami was the chairman and the place Vaishali, Bihar. Monks of Vaishali wanted some changes in the monastic code. 
So a few doctrines were added under the under the Vinaya Pitaka, which is known as Second Buddhist Council significance. Third Buddhist Council significance, 250 BC is the timeline. Ashoka, the great Ashoka of Mauryan Empire, and Mogali Putra Tisa, he was a chairman of the particular council, and Pataliputra, Patna Bihar is the place. Compilation of Abhidhamma Pitaka. Abhidhamma Pitaka means it's a philosophical explanation of Buddha's teaching comes under Abhidhamma. Okay, and also decision were took to send many people as a missionaries to the distant part of the distant part of the world. Fourth Buddhist Council, 98 AD. Uh, the king name called Kanishka. Okay, Vasumitra and Ashwagosha was the chairman, and Kashmir is the place. Okay, Kashmir. Translation of three Pitakas, Vinaya, Sutta, and Abhidhamma. This three Pitakas from Pali language to the Sanskrit language, which was made by Ashwagosha. And the division of Buddhism into Hinayana Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism. These are all the basic features that we need to understand about the councils of Buddhism. Causes of the decline of Buddhism. How this uh, Buddhism got declined? Buddhism succumbed to the ritual ceremonies which it had originally denounced. Earlier, Buddhism became more popular among the people because they are against the rituals and sacrifices. But the introduction of Mahayana Buddhism, idol worship became popular. Because of that, many rituals and ceremonies were followed by the Buddhist people. So that is the reason behind uh, you know, the first decline. They gave up Pali and took Sanskrit. The fourth Buddhist council translated the work of Buddha, Tripitakas into Pali, Pali into the Sanskrit. So that is the reason. Adoption of uh, Sanskrit instead of the Pali language, which was uh, popular among the common people of India during that time period. They began to practice idol worship and received numerous offerings from the devotees. Mahayana Buddhism is the emergence of idol worship of Buddha. When they started doing the idol worship, they started getting offering from the people of India. Monasteries came under the domination of the ease loving people and become the center of corrupt practices. They adopted uh, <clears throat> gifts, receiving more money, and also, you know, they lived a luxurious life. The monasteries become the center of corruption activity. And Vajrayana forms started to develop, and Buddhists came to look upon women as objects of lust, not as the member of the particular Sanghas. So, these are all the reasons behind causes of the decline of Buddhism. Okay, importance and influence of Buddhism in terms of literature, development of uh, Tripitakas, that is Sutta Pitaka, Vinaya Pitaka, and Abhidhamma Pitaka. We know what is this. And also Melinda Panho. There was a dialogue which happened between the Menander and the Saint Nagasena, was compiled in the name of book, which is known as Melinda Panho or Questions of Melinda which was one of the important literature work of the Buddhism compiled during the post-Mauryan era under the Indo-Greeks. Melinda is an Indo-Greek king. Dipavamsa and Mahavamsa is the chronicles. Chronicles means short stories related to the life of Buddha which belong to Sri Lanka. And Buddha Charita was written by Ashwagosha. These are all the contribution given by the uh, literature part of Buddhism. And the different sector of uh, you know, Buddhism, Hinayana, which is known as lesser vehicle, they believed in the real teaching of Gautama Buddha to attain the Nirvana, that is enlightenment. They do not believe in the idol worship and they follow only Pali language, which is in the Hinayana text. About Mahayana Buddhism, which is known as greater vehicle, they believe that Nirvana is attained by the grace of Gautama Buddha and they followed Bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas means the person who is going to be a Buddha, like Dalai Lama now is considered as a Bodhisattva. So they believed in Bodhisattva instead of whom? The Gautama Buddha, by following, not by following his teachings. They believe in idol worship and also followed Sanskrit, the Sanskrit language used in the Mahayana text. Vajrayana, they believe that Nirvana is attained by the help of magical tricks or black magic. That comes under Vajrayana Buddhism. Okay, so the Bodhisattvas were the different category uh, of Buddhas. Uh, Avalokiteshvara, compassion, Buddhist Buddha's compassion, Manjushri, Buddha's wisdom, Sambatta Bhadra, Buddha's aspirations, okay, Shtigarbha, Buddha's merit, Maitheriya, Buddha's activity, Vajravani, Buddha's power, Sara Nivarna, Buddha's qualities, okay, Akashagarbha, Buddha's 
blessings. So these are all the Bodhisattva's form of Buddha. So Buddhist architecture, I told you, place of worship, that is Tupa. And development of cave architecture, Barabar Cave in Bodhgaya, Bihar is one of the popular architecture work. Development of idol worship and sculptures, Gandhara School of Art, Mathura School of Art, Amravati School of Art came into existence. The growth of universities, okay, three important universities came into existence. But two popular universities which contribute more in terms of development of Buddhism, that is Nalanda University and Vikrama Shila University. Both the university were located in which state? Bihar. Okay. So, these are all the information you need to understand related to the Buddhism. Next religious is Jainism. Jainism is not at all coined by one person. It was developed by 24 Tirthankaras. Tirthankaras means Jain teachers. So, 24 Tirthankaras. The first Tirthankara name called Rishabdev being the first and the last one is Mahavira. 24th one is Mahavira. Okay, there is no need to remember all the 24 names, but you need to remember under the first Tetankara and 23rd and 24th Tetankara. 23rd Tetankara, Parshavananta. Okay, his emblem is snake. 24th and the last Tetankara was Vardhamana Mahavira. Emblem is lion. So, Vardhamana Mahavira was born in Kundagrama, uh, Bihar in the year of 599 BC. His father was Siddhartha. He was the head of Nyanatrika clan. His mother was Trishala, sister of Lichavi princess of Vaishali, married to Yashoda and had a daughter named called Priyadarshan, uh, who husband Jamili became the first disciple. Okay. At 30, after the death of parents, he became, the, became an ascetic. He attained supreme knowledge, that is enlightenment, nirvana, right? Here it is Kaivalya. Kaivalya was attained by him. And uh, at the age of 72, he attained death at Pavapuri near Patna in the year of 527 BC. Okay, this is the, a little bit information related to Vardhamana Mahavira, who considered to be one of the greatest in the religious name called Jainism. Five woes of Jainism. If anyone wanted to follow this Jainism, they need to take this five woe. That is Ahimsa, non-violence. Satya, do not speak lie. Asatya, do not steal. Apagriha, do not acquire anyone's property. Brahmacharya, celibacy. Remember, this four was given by 23 Tetankaras. This last one was added by 24 Tetankara Mahavira. So, the Brahmacharya was added by Mahavira under the five woes of Jainism. Three main principles, that is Ahimsa, Aneka Tantavada, Apagriha. These are three main principles of your Jainism. <coughs> three Ratnas of Jainism. Right faith, right knowledge, right conduct. Samyak Sharda, Samyak Shraddha, Samyak Nyan, Samyak Karma. Right faith, right knowledge, right conduct. So, how you can acquire all these things? Five type of knowledge. Matti Nyana, sensory knowledge. Shruti Nyana, scriptural knowledge. Avadi Nyana, clairvoyance. Mahaparyaya Nyana, telepathy. Keval Jnana, Omniscience. These are all the five type of knowledges where you can acquire the three Ratnas of Jainism. So, two Jain councils happened. Uh, first Jain council at Pataliputra, Patna, under the patronage of Chandragupta Maurya in 300 BC, where 12 Angas were compiled. Second council, Jain council happened at Vallabi, Gujarat, in 512 AD, which is the final compilation of 12 Angas. And 12 Upangas was done. So, two sectors of Jainism, Shwadambaras, Digambaras. There was a greatest famine in the region of northern India. So, the few Jain monks decided to move towards the southern part of India. Okay, southern part of India. So, under the leadership of Badrabahu, they came to the region named called Mysore in southern part of India. Okay, so they settled down in south. So, when there was a famine got over, there was a big change in the code of conduct. What happens here is, Stalabahu is the one who used to have the leadership of the people who settled in Nadan itself. Okay, they started adopting the cloth because the Jainism representing the nudity. But the people who were staying in the Nadan part of India started wearing the white cloth. When there was an invitation given by Stalabahu to Badrabahu, they went and they saw and they got shocked because there was a change in code of conduct. 
So they decided to go back to the south and settle down there itself. So that is the time place where we got division in the Jainism. The people who were settled down in the northern India were popularly known as Shodambaras. People who put white drops, okay, they stayed back in north during uh, the time period of uh, Femine were known as Nadanas. And the people who remained naked were known as Digambaras and they settled down here in southern part of India. Best example we can take Shrana Balagula, uh, you know, the statue of Bahubali which is representing the Digambara sect of Jainism. Okay, so Jain literature, they used Prakrit language. It's one of the local language which was there in India during that time period and also common language so that the people can easily follow the particular religious. Okay, so 12 Angas, 12 Upangas, 10 Parikramas, 6 Ched Sutras, 4 Mula Sutras, 2 Sutra Granthas. These are all the major literature work was composed under Jain literature in which language? Prakrit language. Okay, so based on the concepts, we have few quiz questions. We will discuss that, then only you can understand. The first Jain assembly was organized at Pataliputra, Vaishali, Rajgriha, Vallavi. Pataliputra, that is Patna, modern state, that is Bihar. Second one is Vallabi, Gujarat. Who was the 23rd Titankara of Jainism? Parshavananta. Okay, Parshavananta. Why Parshavananta is important? Because he is the one who insists the Jain monks to wear the white cloth. Okay, Shodambaras. Where did Lord Mahavira attain salvation? That is Pavapuri, Bihar. Okay, to which religion Tripitaka scripture related to? Tripitakas, Vinaya Pitaka, Sutta Pitaka and Abhidhamma Pitaka were composed in Pali language for the contribution of which religious? Buddhism. Okay, Buddhism. The fourth Buddhist council held at first Buddhist council Rajgriha. Second Buddhist Council, Vaishali. Third Buddhist Council, Pataliputra. The fourth Buddhist Council at Kashmir. Under the Kanishka patronage. Okay, so uh, discuss, like one of the discussion we had, which is related to the Jainism and Buddhism. Uh, practice more number of questions of this chapter. And you can go through the slides in previous, so that you can understand and all the static portion covered here. Okay, that is fair enough for your preparation. Okay, so do well, all the best.